Hey everyone, I'm here with Lilo Bowman. Lilo, I am so happy for you. Thank you so much. I am very, very thrilled with the book. I really am. Right. So before we get into the book, which is the upshot of this whole um, Skype we're doing, Lilo has been with the Quilt Show since almost the beginning, right? Yes. You guys started January 1. I came on May 15. Oh, okay. really? The baby was still had an umbilical cord. <laughs> Practically, yes, yes. Well, to set this whole thing up, Lilo is our editor-in-chief, and she just kind of runs the show with tapings, with all, I mean, actually, I don't even want to pin a title on you because you're, you're, you do everything, right? Would you agree? You wear a lot of hats. Yeah. And one of the things that you did was you did a series on quilting spaces. And so then what happened was C&T saw this and said, and said, you need to do a book. So let me show everybody the book, which I've just gotten my hands on yesterday. It's absolutely beautiful. And guys, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the kinds of things that are in the book so that you have an understanding. It is a very, very, in my book, deep, comprehensive book. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So, so let's just start with, we have stuff. Now, how are you going to help us with our stuff? Well, the thing that I've, that I've learned over the years as a maker myself, because I do mostly sewing and um, uh, garment construction, um, and I've also sort of dabbled in, in do crochet, is quilters like to play in all different kinds of playgrounds. So they, they have quilt fabric. They maybe knit. Some of them uh, crochet. Some of them do beading. And there's all kinds of stuff that's involved in all of those playgrounds. And we have a lot of things. And we have a space, so your space is whatever size you've got. Mine it happens to be a guest a guest bedroom that I'm using as an office studio. And I've got to figure out a way to get all that stuff I like to play with into this space, and be able to move around, access it, and actually set it up so I can get to it when I need it. And and that is really challenging. And the thing is, is that what we don't want to do is just constantly take this stack of stuff and move it over here and then take this other stack of stuff because we need to be over here for a few minutes and move that over there. You know what I'm talking about. I have a problem with that. I deal with it. I know everyone else does. The other thing that is really stressful for people is you're starting a project and guess what? The fabric that you bought for the pattern, you cannot find. Is it under the bed? Is it in the guest closet in a bag? Is it, you know, under a... As I would always say, my fur friends, are they sleeping under it? It's really, really difficult to, to get everything together and keep it together. So in the, um, so in the book, you actually go through stuff like, oh, let me go to the front um, of it, where it is. Things like, things like um, lighting, cleaning up, go mobile, um, walls and floors, set it up. And then here, I love this stuff, my stuff, which we're talking about. Soft stuff, tool stuff, sticky stuff, making stuff, and blinging stuff. That kind of is it in a nutshell. <laughs> pretty, pretty much, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And the one of the things that you'll find quite often in the book is called the circle of reach. And if you want to think of yourself as a bullseye, things that you need every day that you work with, you want to have those where you can grab them really quickly within within an arm's reach things that you don't need every single day all the time they can be a little further out and then let's say for example do you need bolts of batting every single day probably not those can live somewhere else either across the room or maybe in another place and so that's one of the things when you're looking at your at your place that you're creating is to assess what you have what do you need around you daily, what do you need around you weekly, what around you monthly, and then determine where do all those things need to be set out, um, which will really help you not have to stumble all over things. Well, that and I'm going to tell you, I've got a giant roll of batting that is so ugly. I, I don't use it that often. It's got a plastic bag on it. It needs to go to the garage for Pete's sakes. Right, right. It's okay. that sort of thing. Okay, Absolutely. okay. So my, my book collection used to be in my office, and then I realized I don't need 300 books in my office. I'm not looking at those every day. 
So I start, I move them into a, what was a linen closet down the hall. Mm -hmm. So they're still close if I need to go get a book, but they're not in here. Right. Now, now is the beginning of the book basically like go buy yourself a palatious mansion? (laughs) Yeah. yeah, We wish. Yeah. That's the other thing is the reality is that most of us don't have a lot of space and most of us don't have a huge budget. And, and we also hate partying with anything. That's, that's another uh, thing that we struggle with. But yeah, the the book starts out with going through purging. And that's one of the hardest things for people to do is to go through, you know, let's say it's 20 years of fabric. Well, maybe that stuff you bought in 1980 that you thought was really cute with little pigs and with sunglasses on. It's not rocking your world anymore. But you know what? Somebody else will love that. So you, that's kind of where we start with is start with all the things that you've got, go through it, Let's not attack the entire room at one time. We're doing it piece by piece. It's like eating a piece of pizza. We're going to just start on one piece of pizza, and that might be your fabric. And then we're going to move on to the next piece of pizza. Um, Because if you try to do it all at once, it's overwhelming for people. They don't, they get frustrated. Oh, you can't, you can't. And you can't. So just do a little bit at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one thing you did that was... um, I don't think I've ever seen this in the in a book ever, um, and I guess I don't know if it was Nola Emery that got you going down this path. But let's talk about people with physical uh, disabilities or changing bodies and all that kind of stuff. Um, it wasn't just Nola. It's you know after working on the cult show now for thirteen years and meeting audience members, I I had lots of conversations with people saying. Wow, you know, I have such a hard time seeing things anymore. The light on my sewing machine just, you know, I can, it's like sewing in the dark. Um, or I had knee surgery and I can't work in my place anymore. And that got me to thinking that, you know, just because your body changes, like we didn't all used to have to wear these all the time, <laughs> um, is that it doesn't mean that creativity has to stop. It just means that we need to sort of, do a workaround. Let's figure out how we can still be able to have a place that we can work and we can see what we're working on. So maybe that means means getting better lighting. So instead of investing in other things, invest in really good lighting. Because if you can see what you're doing, then you're going to have a lot more fun. And it's a lot less dangerous. Absolutely, Nola's show was instrumental. I did reach out to her right away to say, I wanted to pick her brain about what does she do as a workaround because she's gone from an athletic woman who was a daredevil, did everything to she had a massive stroke and she was right-handed and she can only work, now work with her left hand. So I she had to learn everything. And I tell, and I tell people, I tell people I that we can go to YouTube and look up Nola Emery and I'm going to tell you right now, she is one of the most inspiring people I've ever met in my life. And that said, how many studios did you actually visit in here? Because that's in the back of the book, which is cool. There are six studios that you go to visit. And the reality of most studios, as we said, are small. So the studios you see are real working studios. So there's there's one a, a woman in Tokyo, Japan. Her name is um, Kimi, Kimi Kahara. Please don't quote me on that one. Uh, I'm looking. Is it in the book here? (laughs) Yeah, it's in the book. And her studio is literally the top of a desk because she's an embroiderer and she lives in Tokyo and that's all the room she's got. But it's super organized and it's colorful and it definitely has her personality on it. Okay. Is it Kamika Hara? Kamika Hara. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, And then we have a studio that's, you know, the size of a bedroom. Then we have a studio that's quite a bit larger. Um, and they're all very different, but they're actual working studios. So yes. the, the other thing that you guys need to know is that um, Lilo has been married into the military her whole life. And so you would have to go from place to place to place to place. So that, I think, sets up your organization just beautifully. Yes, I moved 13 times in 21 years and never did I know exactly what my sewing space was going to look like or the size of it. In fact, one time I actually had to use a small coat closet. That was the only space in the house that I used as a sewing space. So it's it's about where you are, the place that works for you, your budget, and where you are right now. And right now might be for two years Mm -hmm. or it might be for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then maybe things shift. Maybe you're downsizing from your your big house to your smaller house. And now you've got to figure out how I'm going to get all my stuff into here and it might mean that you might have to let some of that go but you know 
Which would you prefer? Some place that you can access and play with things or that you're drowning and stuff and you can't move around? Well, Lilo, I think this book is absolutely beautiful. It's not a how-to book. It's not how to put up a design wall. It's how to figure out your space and use it to its best advantage. Would you say that's it in a nutshell? Yeah, I loved how you mentioned it earlier today that it's about building your nest and making the nest for you. And it's not a one size solution. It's, you know, if you love color, then rock the color out. If you need calm, do that. It's, you know, when you go buy a bra, it's not a one size fits all ladies. <laughs> in a bathing suit. <laughs> or a bathing suit. You know, you've got to figure out what works for you in your budget. And it's a Let's figure out together a place that works for you that you love kind of book. Well, I just want to say, Lilo, first of all, we are so lucky to have you on the TQS team. Thank you so much. And I am so happy for you for this. So happy. I, it just, it's beautiful. And it's a read, you guys. It's a real read. And I can't, I, like I said, I just got it yesterday. I got it from the TQS store. And I'm not a reader, but I got news for you. I'm going to read this. Well, it has a lot of pretty pictures, too. So yes, it does. Uh, take up some time. But I, I love working at the quilt show. I've loved all the people that I've met. And really, the big thing is, is I'm hoping that all the ideas and tips would really help people. So mm -hmm. they're not just sitting and watching the world go by. They can still play, no matter how old they are. Well, I want to thank you so, so much. And then before we went on, I said, are you guys, are you going to write another book? And she said, that's like asking somebody right after they've delivered a baby. Hey, let's have another one. So, <laughs> there's Not right away. <laughs> well, listen, I will see you shortly. I don't know when. I don't know where. This COVID thing is crazy. But um, congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to share. Thanks, Lilo. All right. Bye-bye.